Hi everyone. This is the second video in Trig 2D Applications. If you haven't watched the first video yet, I suggest you watch that one first before watching this. In this video, we're going to focus on angles of elevation and depression. As a quick recap, let's look at the trig ratios and rules for triangles. Firstly, if you have a right angled triangle, then you can use the theorem of Pythagoras. You can use the trig ratios, sine is opposite over hypotenuse, cos is adjacent over hypotenuse, and tan is opposite of adjacent. And you can use the area formula, half base times height. For any triangle, you can use the sine rule, the cosine rule, or the area rule. Remember, you're only going to use the cos rule if you have the situation of side angle side, the angles between the two sides, or side side side. Otherwise, you're going to try and use the sine rule. The area rule needs to have the information in the format of side angle side. Now, What's new in this video is we're going to discuss angles of elevation and angles of depression. Now, angles of elevation are angles that go from the horizontal upwards. So the angle of elevation is from the horizontal upwards. The angle of depression, however, is from the horizontal downwards. So these are two new terms that we're using, elevation from horizontal up and depression from horizontal down. These sort of questions normally have quite a long explanation and a picture accompanying the explanation. So let's look at it. It says two points, P and Q, are on opposite sides of F, the foot of the flagpole FT. So P and Q are opposite sides of F. Then it says P, Q and F are all on the same horizontal plane, meaning they all line up on the same line. The angle of elevation of T from P is 25. Now, T will be the top of the flagpole. So the angle of elevation from the horizontal up to T is 25. If they're using the word from, from is where the angle originates from. So it says of T from P, it means the angle is starting at P and going up. Then it says the angle of elevation from q to t is 32. So from q to t, I've got an angle of 32. The distance between p and q is 30 meters. Determine the height of the flagpole. Now I find sometimes this information seems a bit confusing. However, looking at the picture makes it a little bit clearer. Now, as before, it's helpful to break your triangle up into other triangles. So at the moment, you can see you have one large triangle, which is triangle T, P and Q, or T, Q and P. And then you've got a number of smaller triangles within that larger triangle. Now, I want to find out what the height of T, P is. Now, as I currently have things, I don't have enough information. However, what I could do is I could first find out the length of TP, and using that, I can find out the length of TF. So let's start. Let's first say which triangle I'm working with, N triangle, TPQ, that's the green triangle. I want to work out the length of TP. Now for TP, I need, I can use opposite, I can use the sine rule because I'll have 30 meters and T and I'll have 32 degrees and TP. So let's see, I'm going to say, let's first work out angle T will be 180 minus 25 minus 32. Reason is sum of angles in a triangle. And so I get T is 123 degrees. So let's put that in on my sketch. I know that T is 123 degrees. So if I want to work out TP, TP over sine of Q is going to equal to 30, or let's call it PQ, out of sine of T. 
So I'm going to get TP is PQ 30 out of sine of T, sine of 123, times by sine of Q, which is going to give me sine of Q is sine of 32. And when I type that into my calculator, I get that TP is 18,9556 and so on meters. Now, I don't round off now because I want to get an accurate answer at the end. So I won't round off now. 18,9556 meters. Now, I want to work out the length of TP. Now, if I think about how the flagpole sits, surely the angle of the flagpole to the ground will be 90 degrees. So now I have a right angle triangle, TPF. So we can say in triangle TPF. Now, since I have a right angle triangle, I'm going to use the ratios. So according to 25 degrees, this one here is opposite. And I have the hypotenuse, which means I'm going to use sine. So I'm going to say TF out of TP is going to equal to sine of P. Let's add values in TF. TP is going to be 18,9556 times by sine of 25. So I've just multiplied the both bottoms by 18.556. And I get that the length of my flagpole is 8,01, but it says to the nearest meter, so 8 meters. Let's look at an example with angles of depression. It says, from the top of a tall building, AB, so there's my tall building, the angle of depression to a person on the ground is 75 degrees. So remember, the angle of de depression runs from the horizontal down. So that will be the angle of depression there. The person walks 20 meters closer to the building. There I can see they've walked 20 meters closer to the building to point D. And the angle of depression changes to 78 degrees. The question is, how tall is the building? So the question asks me, how long is AB? Now, if I look at the information given, I don't have any information that I can straight away work out AB. I do know, surely, that AB will form 90 degrees with the ground. So let's go back to the question. I can't use A. B, C to work, but I could divide my triangle into two smaller triangles. There's one, and there's the other. Now, if I find the length, the length of the linking side, AD, I should have enough information to work out the height of the tower. So, let's start. I'm going to start in triangle A. D, C. Now, currently, all I know about this triangle is I know the length of DC, which is 20. I can also work out the length of the small angle A, and that's going to be 3 degrees. So let's write that down. DAC will be 3 degrees, and I know that because I subtracted 75 from 78. Also, now this is what's really nice with angles of elevation and depression questions, is I know that the horizontal plane is parallel. So whatever line I take on the horizontal plane, it will be parallel to the ground, which means that I have alternate angles. So I know that angle C will be 75 degrees alternate angles. So that's 75. Now I have enough information to work out AD. So AD, I'm going to use the sine rule because I've got a pair that are opposite each other. AD out of sine of C is equal to what I've got, DC, out of sine of DAC. Let's put our values in. AD is equal to, I know that DC is 20. I know that DAC is 3 degrees, 
And I'm going to multiply both sides by sine of C. So I'm going to be multiplying by sine of 75 degrees. So if I take out my calculator and I work that out, I'm going to get AD's length is 369,12512. So that length is 369,12512 meters. Now, in the next triangle, I've got a right angle triangle, and I want to work out the height of AB. However, I need another angle. So again, I can use the idea of alternate angles. And I can now work here. So I know that angle D will be 78 degrees. Let's write that down. So in triangle ABD, angle D, so that's called angle ADB, is 78 degrees. And my reason is alternate angles. And now I can work out what AB is. So I know the hypotenuse length, because this length here is the hypotenuse. And according to 78, this will be opposite. So I am going to use sine again. I'm going to say AB out of AD is equal to sine of ABD. So AB is going to be, I know what AD is, 369,12512 times by sine of 78. And I get a length of 361,058,06 meters. So as you can see, don't let the explanation confuse you too much. Use the picture to help you work out what's going on. Also, remember that with angles of elevation and depression, that on your horizontal plane, any line on the horizontal plane is parallel to another line. So you can then use alternate angles or co-interior angles or corresponding angles to help you solve your problem.